Hi guys, welcome, welcome. We're gonna let the live build up for a few for a few minutes and then we'll get started. How are you guys going? Today's Monday. Hey guys. Yes. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Let the light fill up, fill up, fill up, fill up. Big up, big up, big up. Welcome, welcome, guys. Come on in, come on in. Rock on, come in. <laughs> yes, it is good. It's a good, good day. Good, good day. Yes. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come in, come in, guys. Give it a few moments for the live to build up a bit. Rock and come in, rock and come in. <laughs> hi, hi, hi. <laughs> yes, people. Yes, Lord. God is good. Nick, Nick. Hey, how you doing, darling? Long time. How is my little girl? I mean, she's growing up now. <laughs> yes, guys. Another week is upon us, eh? Time is just flying, flying, flying. But we're still in the land that we live in and we have a lot of things to be thankful for, right? Yes, 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 yes. I think so. So Nick, oh, what's up, Nick? She's great. Okay, good. Nice, nice. Young work. Is it your first time on Motivational Monday? Oh, okay. I'm good. Okay, great, great, great. Nice, nice, nice. Well, welcome, welcome, guys, to Motivation on Monday. Thank you for tuning in every Monday. You're listening to <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Nick. Yes, thank you. Um, participate if you can. You might have some, um, some good points to um, bring to the table to other people who's watching. Um, so, you know, chip in and, and let's go. All right. Um, so we're gonna start at 802 and it's a wonderful day every day is a blessing every single day right good nice 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 okay so I'm gonna start pleasant good afternoon to all thank you guys for tuning in to motivational Monday uh, we are in July month and I just want to give God all praises, all honor and glory for those that take the time out to spend with me for my hour. Carrying out God's will requires a heart that trusts Him, a soul that steps out in obedience, and a mind that leaves success or failure to Him. As we break down the faith barrier, we will be able to see the evidence of God's presence and power and experience the joy of obedience father thank you for sending your son jesus to be my lord and savior thank you that you do anything and everything you want you no one can hold back your hand help us lord that when i feel inadequate to remember that you are more than adequate Lord you know my struggles I know that carrying out your will requires a heart that trusts you give me a greater desire for your glory help me to be patient with your timing give us your heart for others help us to see through your eyes help us to be the, the person that you want us to be change our hearts and make me more like you in jesus precious name 
Father God, I would like to pray this afternoon for my sister, Edward Briggs, that is lying in the hospital right now, dear Lord. Guide her, protect her, and strengthen her. You know diabetes is something else, and diabetics out there, you got to be careful and take care of your health, right? I want to say, I watched the news and I saw the fire um, this morning in Trinidad that three children lost their lives today. I want to just have a moment of silence for them. Yes, thank you, Lord. Father God, it's not easy to lose children. And watching that father scream out, helpless, that he couldn't go in that house today to save the remaining of the kids, it was heart-wrenching. So once again, condolences going out to the family today that lose those three children in Trinidad and Tobago. All right, guys, we have to have a plan of escape. And, you know, I know we want to be protected in our homes. And sometimes the burglar proofing, in case of a fire, there's no way out. And that is what happened today. Very, very sad situation. But, you know, we'll keep them in prayer. Right? So, welcome to another week another motivational monday um guys thank you thank you thank you so much thank you i i mean i can't don't say thank you because you guys give me the inspiration to keep going to keep bringing topics um of interest people um if you have something that you would like us to discuss just inbox me i'll try to get someone who specializes, and you know we can go from there each one teach one you know it's all about relations it's all about you know relationships and helping one another right so today um, my health topic my health segments today will be on hemorrhoids the symptoms of hemorrhoids depends on the type you have if you have external hemorrhoids you may have anal itching one or more harder tender lumps near your anus anal aches or pain especially when sitting too much straining rubbing or cleaning around your anus may make your symptoms worse for many people the symptoms of external hemorrhoids goes away within a few days welcome Seanette good night if you have internal hemorrhoids you may have bleeding from your rectum, bright red blood on stool, on toilet paper, or in the toilet bowl after a bowel movement. Hmm. A hemorrhoid that has fallen through your anal opening cause perplex. Internal hemorrhoids that are not perplex must often are not painful. Perplex internal hemorrhoids may cause pain and discomfort. Although hemorrhoids are the most common case of anal symptoms, not every anal symptom is caused by a hemorrhoid. Some hemorrhoid symptoms are similar to those of other. Digestive tract problem, for example, bleeding from the rectum may be a sign of bowel disease such as Crohn disease, Eucalyptus cholestis or cancer of the colon or rectum. When should you seek help? You should seek a doctor's help if you still have symptoms after one week at home treatment, have bleeding from your rectum. 
What causes hemorrhoids? Straining during bowel movement. Sitting on the toilet for long periods of time. Chronic constipation or diarrhea. A low fiber diet. Weakening of supporting tissue in your anus and rectum that happens with aging. Pregnancy, often lifting heavy objects. Now, I suffer with hemorrhoids. My hemorrhoids that I have is internal. And I could tell you, mine's, I got a true stress, worrying and stuff when I was younger, in my, in my 20s. It is a painful, painful, painful pain. I can't even explain this pain, but I had surgery for it. And um, I mean, all the symptoms that they talk about here, I had it. I always had a uh, constipation, even when I travel. Um, sometimes, you know, I don't go off as I should. Um, you know forcing and different things like that so I'm talking from experience having hemorrhoids and stuff um, I'm no longer really um, is affected as such after the surgery um, but I noticed certain things that I eat um, I can't eat anymore like spicy foods um, a lot of acids and different things like that um, don't agree with me so um, you know, um, I also for a year now I've been taking um, a tablet called Ghoulie. Um, it you get it at Target. It's in a blue and a red um, bottle. And normally I used to take two Ghoulies a day. Um, Ghoulie is an apple cider vinegar. Um, it, it it's you know it helps you go off and things like that. So. What I tend to do is take one Ghoulie a day, so I go off normal, I don't have to force and different things like that. Normally I would have had to use like a stool softener or something to go off. And every time I travel, um, it happens. I, I don't go off like that. I don't know if it's a mental situation or things like that, but you know, um, when you go to the bathroom, you're supposed to be going normal. You're not supposed to be forcing. Um, don't stress out yourself about anything that you can't fix you know to help help that because again it have internal hemorrhoids and it have external everyone's situation is different i know to my niece um during pregnancy she she had hemorrhoids and when she had the baby it disappeared so everybody's situation is different um regarding this um hemorrhoid and it could be cut and it could be cured you know Again, you have to watch your diet, watch what you eat, and you should be okay. So I hope this helps someone out there today. It's something near and dear, and it's something that I'm living with. And, um, you know, just be careful again. Watch your diet and make sure that, you know, you're, you're eating right um, so that you could go off properly, right? So that's my health segment today, guys. Again, health is wealth. Um, start 10 minutes if you walk 10 minutes walking um give yourself when you do 10 minutes you go 15 you go 20 increase it um don't push yourself to strain yourself have a goal um get something that you know inspire you um because i think being healthy especially as we're growing older is so important um and we have to regulate the things that we eat not everything that we see our body couldn't take it. We have to be more disciplined um, while eating, right? So you have to take care of yourself. Take care of your health, all right, guys? And make sure that, you know, you're drinking a lot of water. A lot of people don't drink water. Water is very, 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 very good for you to eat and different things like that, that you know, for your system to clean it out and, and different things, even when you're working out instead of going to have juice drink water you know the sugars ain't good anyhow especially when you're getting older so take care of your health right um you know just get something that inspires you right 
fiber in your diet yes it's very very important and you know a lot of people too Shannon doesn't like to eat like greens and stuff greens and stuff is so healthy for you to eat things like bhaji and pak choy and different five you know green things good for the soul some people don't eat vegetables some people don't eat salads and different things like that but um it's good for you you know you have to change up things you know in your system so that they can you know have a, a good bowel movement again we all suffer you know with something but we have to regulate you know our bowel movement by doing the proper things not to get hemorrhoid all right so don't be scared guys you remember if you go if you're having a bowel movement and you see blood or anything you know see a doctor it's it's something going on there right to make sure that you know you're, you're okay so i want to talk a little bit today about holding on um and why I, I bring up this topic is because I find we Caribbean parents doesn't like to let our children live a life of freedom. And when I mean freedom, um, I find we hold on to our kids and we, we, we tend to hold on, right? So my topic today is about holding on holding on to hurt holding on to bad relationship toxic relationship holding on to stuff holding on to things so we're going to talk today about holding on right um i know this will touch a lot of people because again i myself had to disconnect from what I mean disconnect okay let me rephrase that I find that I was holding on to my son well you know it's one child I have and for some reason we West Indian parents um, doesn't want to let go we don't want to let go so I had to learn to let go not let go totally but I had to ease up from my son from having that um, I started to think you know what if something happened to me today or tomorrow what will be the outcome of him um, you know can he wash can he cook can he make his bed can he do stuff on his own and um, when I really look at myself I realized that I was enabling him I realized that you know what when he reach a particular age um, or children Parents need to let loose a bit and don't tie down these children because I, I realize and I see situations where when even like married couples too it, it's like you married a, your mother instead of having a wife and different things like that so I'm talking about holding on in general right why do we hold on to hurt stay connected to cause Sometimes we hold on to emotional pain to remain connected to that which cause our pain, such as an estranged spouse or a dead parent. We keep the past alive in our lives through the pain, sparing us the sense of guilt. Letting go of pain sometimes bring a sense of guilt why do you hold on to bad relationships holding on to a toxic relationships often happen because we fear the pain that we will feel if we let go but letting go of toxic love is very important for a happy life letting go of a toxic love is something that you can start doing right now why do men hold on to the past? The biggest reason anyone hold on to the past is because they don't feel heard or fully understood by the person they perceive to, that hurt them. Once they feel validated, like you understand why they are upset, 
your partner can come back to a logical and that defensive or emotional state become more regulated and sued why people hold on to stuff this is my grandfather's standard response to the basic question of childhood why grandpa my interpretation of that expression is that the answer is complicated when it comes to human behavior it is almost is the answer is complicated because there are so many different kind of stuff there are so many different kind of people now two individuals no two individuals are alike no situation are alike each is unique in their environment and although you may emphasize you cannot compare your situation to theirs nor can you judge them right we could deal with that these are some reasons lack of permission lack of instruction lack of knowledge i didn't know that i had a deadline not aware of alternative i borrow it and i don't know if they want it back out of sight out of mind i may need it someday can't waste someone else may need it sentimental values overwhelm don't know where to begin unable to buy some small pieces to downsize not ready waiting for the right time not a priority fear of letting go this is not the first thing on my agenda so again i know a lot of people hold on to stuff in their home they don't want to get rid of buying new furnitures they they, they have furniture in the house for years and years it it dilapidated it not in a good condition i mean i know people cherish antiques and different things like that but it have some people that i know just don't want to let go of nothing even clothes for years they have clothes from since 19 whatever 18 something fuss it all they don't want to get rid of their stuff you have to let go if my my thinking is right if i don't wear something this year i'm not wearing it next year so why keep hoarding things in your home that you're not using put it by the roadside or give it to charity if it's in a good condition right but i can't understand and they have people that hold on to these things like a prized possession you have the grandmother you have the grandfather you have your mother your father they don't want to throw in nothing in the house they just want to pile up everything and leave it there and don't get rid of it no guys mm -mm. they hold on to these things you know it too it have some people that don't like change they don't like change anything out of the environment they can't function okay like every sunday i I'm cooking macaroni pie stew chicken salad red bean they every sunday for the rest of the life they're cooking that the car eat some roti the car eat a pillow the car eat some provision and saltfish pizza italian greek try something new no then you have the people who don't want to try nothing they just want to eat what they want to eat they don't even want to try just a bite of stuff because they, they're just happy in their little world. You understand? So they hold on and they keep holding on. I can't understand it. I, I can't understand it. Why do people hold on? Why? Why they hold on to all this stuff? You understand? The house in clutter is a clutter. They don't want to them small ornaments i don't like them my house ain't have any i ain't gonna walk i ain't going to wash i ain't gonna duck no mm -mm -mm. i ain't like that my father he used to like junk and he, from the time i grew up i was like i not anything i don't use i destroy 
that's not saying that I'm rich. That's not saying I'm better than anyone. No, I just don't like clutter. I don't. I like an environment of um. Clear. I like brightness. I don't like too many things in a home. You know, um, that's just me. But I'm just talking about the people who hold on to these things. What you're holding on to it for? What are you holding on to? Talk to me. Tell me. We, come, we, we become attached to our stuff, but we don't really understand why. All human keeps things, and maybe there's a logical reason for this behavior. If you are one of those people who keep things just in case one day you might need it, or you know you have things that you don't use it, and you keep it anyway. It's pretty interesting, right? It is. Gifts, memories, feeling, just in case, storage, lack of time. This is this is some of the reason why they just do it. You understand? And I mean it's clutter. I would say it's clutter. And if you try to clean, you're getting problems because they don't want you to. They don't want you to clean. You understand what I'm saying? How to stop holding on to things that and truly live. Emmett's been outstanding, not just a consultant, but also a team player. Clients love him and did colleagues. He dub doubled up and shrank for him from his clients. He went out of his way to help colleagues. He bragged if bragged a few new clients for their films through he didn't get a commission. At his farewell, everyone said nice things. They said they would miss him and promised to keep in touch. But here's what happened. In less than 24 hours, Emmett email access revoked and he was removed from his instant message group. They had never been half as quick to give him support when he needed it. Within a week, the company moved to a new office and held a grand opening, but nobody informed him. Things began to soar between the firm and some of Emmett's clients became consultants who took up the project were not capable enough. But when it, within a firm, word spread and these issues were Emmett's fault. The gossip was that he hid problem to make himself appear smarter. Emmett's response to this, he just shrugged. This is how he is. He gives a hundred percent everything he do and move on. But most would have responded like, we would have been livid. We would have expect people to tell us how things are falling apart without us not blaming us for other incompetence. Here's what really happened. We get stuck to things, relationships, and events. Or rather, our inter perfection are feeling about them why it boils down to one thing attachment how much we attach our identity to the company the friendship or the relationship the deeper your attachment the more effort you put into it without pausing to access our level of control in the situation the result is that we seek validation from what we are attached to Good night, Afia. We overestimate our importance in it and begin to believe that things can work well only when we get involved and we channelize our energy into trying to control outcomes, but harder we try to control something we cannot. The more we set ourselves up for disappointment. One, understand what is in control and two, pursue meaning more than happiness he follows what states that only aspect in your control are perception action and willpower nothing else not even your body because you cannot control whether you fall sick or injured yourself but you have complete control on how you frame your thoughts at any time right so guys again we hold on hi Jillian we hold on and we hold on we have to learn to let 
go. Let go of those old clothing. Let go of all this stuff that you keep building up. Keep buying your groceries. This even your sheet set. How much sheet sets you can wear or use towels, different things. Uh, you know, people hold on to a lot of stuff. What are you holding on to today? You understand? Life expects something from you to know the why of your existence. Let your why not be about pleasing others or living for them. Let it be something that makes you feel satisfied at the end of the day. Even if the results are not in your favor. Something that makes you look forward to the next day. You will be forgotten when you leave. Chasing recognition and appreciation for your efforts will keep you stuck in the past and make you miserable. Chasing meaning move you forward. Do your action and move on. The fruit is not in your control. There's nothing you can do to change that. Accepting this will save you a lot of heartburn. Take care of yourself physically, emotionally, and mentally. To help others lead a better life, you must start with the person in the mirror. What are you holding on to? You understand? We all look at the mirror. We all want to not worry. And we all always trying to fix somebody else. What are you holding on to today? Hi there. No, you're not late. You're in time. You're still, you're still here. What are you holding on to? What, what do people hold on to? You know, I mean, that's my question today. I think a lot of people hold on to a lot of unnecessary things that just doesn't make sense to them. It, I think it, it causes more damage. You're holding on to your kids. <laughs> Hi, blessing. Hi, Juanita. Five reasons you might be holding on to a toxic relationship. Can you relate? Can you relate to this? Holding on to a toxic relationship instead of letting go is more often than not the norm. The strength that it takes to walk away from any relationship, much less toxic one, is huge and the fear of the pain that we might feel even worse. If you want to find the strength to stop holding on to a toxic relationship, it is important to understand why are we holding on. What is motivating us to not let go and walk away of something that is not only making us miserable? To help you understand, there are five reasons you might be holding on to. Okay? Let's see what number one is. It is the human condition to want to be in a pair. To have someone to share one life and experience with. You agree? Hi, Andrew. Unfortunately, for many of us, we are willing to settle for good enough. When it comes to finding the other half of our two storm, we believe that if we let go of the bird in hand, we will never find another person to love. The prospect of putting ourselves out there again so that we can find that person is overwhelming, daunting. So we hold on to the one we have now, no matter how bad they are for us. Many of us can relate to this, right? Let me tell you, for decades of personal and professional experience, there is always another person out there for us. We might not find them the right way, the right away, but we will never find them if we stay in a relationship that we are in. So if you are staying in a toxic relationship, because you believe that if you leave, you will always be alone. Let me tell you, you won't. There is a person out there for you. A pe person who will be your perfect half. You will make 
hold. So if there is hope, all right? Number two, low self-esteem. I can tell you how many of my clients who are in toxic relationship ha have a very low self-esteem. They just don't believe that they are worthy or good, loved, and if they do, they have no idea how to get out of it and find it. Unfortunately, the result of toxic relationship can be the lowering of self-esteem. We are unhappy, isolated from our friends, belittled for a perceived shortcomings and know deep down that we aren't being treated well. And if we don't feel good about ourselves, we attract men who don't feel good. And feeling good about myself allow me to let him go and find someone who sees just how awesome I am. Patterns and habit. I can't overemphasize enough how big the role in a pat pattern plays in our lives. Think about your daily routine and the pattern on how of you feel those days that your routine are broken. Like if you always have breakfast before you head out the door and one day you just can't and how you just don't feel yourself for the rest of the day. People can relate to this. Now imagine this in a relationship. When a relationship is new and good, we establish pattern, routines with our partners and those patterns and routines become en enriched in our lives. Breaking them can be nearly impossible. Do you imagine what Christmas will be like without your partner? Or wonder who you would go to the movies with on Wednesdays? Those are patterns that keep us in, with our toxic loves. We don't want to let go of them. Cannot conceive of life without them. And that keeps us trapped. Interestingly, even the breaking up and getting back together get, gets routine with my toxic relationship. I would break up with him and then like clockwork, eight weeks later, he would reach out to me and before I knew it, I was back where I started. I can't tell you how many times that happened. I've since learned that if you can get past eight weeks mark, you would break a pattern. And I can promise you that you will find someone else to go the, to the movies with on Wednesday, right? One of the most intruders things about toxic love is that after a while, we start to blame ourselves for everything that is going wrong, right? I have a client whose husband had a relationship with one of the, his employees. For three years, my client has asked her husband to fire that woman. For three years, he has promised and he hasn't. She is beside herself and rightly so the thing is her husband has done a remarkable job making her feel like there's an issue with her fault he says that he if she could just let go they could be so happy that she has no compassion for this other woman children what will they do if their mother had no income because of his accusation surely question her mental health some days do you blame yourself for why your relationship is toxic do you believe that if you could just have or been a little nicer or paid more attention to him or had sex with him when he wanted you that everything would be just fine if yes stop your person is making you you your life difficult and while you might play a role in the situation i can promise you that you are not at fault you are so me do you believe that the relationship that you share with your person is like none other that is the intent passion and connection that you share can you con con compare with anyone else relationship that letting go would be such a waste let me tell you everyone feels that way about their relationship I hate to burst the bubble, but while the love you have for that person might be strong, 
it's not the ultimate love in the world and letting go of it would be wouldn't be the end for you all right so again holding on holding on you know we have to ask ourselves many questions why we do things why we hold on to things that is not good for us i mean we have to let go and we have to learn like me i just say talk to self i talk to myself a lot and i ask myself questions and i put myself into situations and you know as i said before holding on to our children even when your son or your daughter marry some parents doesn't want to let go you know they might end up in divorce and then their kid become your kid because you feeling some type of way because their relationship didn't work that's not your fault but you hold on to that and you you have yourself you know you're not living for you you're holding on so why why do people hold on you know nine things to hold on and never let go one family life is shorter than it seems most days health is precious if you are lucky enough to have the luxury of a family you love hold on to them number two friends the good ones eh? you who support you who are up for crazy adventures and crying over a pint of ice cream nine things to hold on to and never let go so one is family two is friends and the good friends okay number three dreams hold on to that all your dreams both the ones you work to realize in life and the ones that remain lovingly nestled among the clouds I'm a big fan of dreamers. Look at Apple. Look at all these people that have dreams. Put your dreams into action. If you could sew, make a dress. Make a dress for your friends. They could wear it. You, you could become a designer. If you like music, make music. Don't hold on to it and not share it with others you understand if he's a good cake maker you can become you understand hi gloria so you know never give up on your dreams that's number three things to hold on to and not let go number four goals because some dreams deserve to be a reality make sure you you are your own not society not your family long term short term have them both make a plan and go for it all right number five ideals i've been jaded critical i've also been an idealistic optimistic hold on to your ideals run away from those jaded jerks who want to convert you while you aren't it hold on to your morals your values your good intention i do believe good intentions matter consequences matter too deal with them when they happen learn from it then go back and start from a place of good intention again it's all you can do and i think this is very very important you see morals you see values you see consequences if you have these or if you don't learn from this you're lost you, you have you have to have ideals and, and, and I, I think a lot of people now do not um, 
encourage or um, nurture their children to have morals, um, values, the worth, you know. They, and when they grow up, they, they lost. So these are things to hold on to, people. That's number five. Number six. Time for yourself. There will always be a million of different people wanting to pull you in a million different directions. Or it will feel that way. Take time for yourself. Do what feels good for your soul. Read, run, pray, meditate, play music, practice yoga, walk, paint, swim, create, peace and mind. What I do for myself, I go do my nails and my toes. That's something I do every two weeks. That's in my budget. I pamper myself. I don't wait for nobody to pamper me. I pamper me. I like doing that. It makes me better. I um, I like to go shopping too. I like to shop. If you know, um, I do a lot of things that makes Phyllis good. I like to travel. I like me time. I travel by myself. I do a lot of things. I like to read too when I get the chance to. I like taking care of me. You have to take care of yourself, people. Come on. I, and, 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 and my attire, I love dressing up. And I think that's the way John and me from my father. But I like to take care of me. You understand? You see, every week my hair in a different color. I try different things. And I'm my own hairdresser. I watch you through. And I'm trying. I take care of me. You know? And I love me. I learn to love me. I learn to love Phyllis. You know? People might be sick of it, but... You have to love yourself and feel good about it, right? That's six. Number seven, time. I know, I know it's important to hold on to time. What I meant is to protect it. Don't let others dictate how you spend it. Then choose how you spend it wisely. No return, no refund, or no exchange on time. I love that. For real you know why tomorrow is no promise to you or me so your time yesterday is gone you know I can't bring back I can't watch back and say what one day yesterday boy there is nothing there to see it's just like a review mirror when you drive in it's only snapshots you take in it come just like snapshots of your life guys so time your time I like that one, number seven. Number eight, your pants. Because this list is far too deep and serious. And because it's always good to have an extra pair. And because this life is crazy, is a crazy ride full of unexpected twists and turns, Robbie Burns said, the best laid plans of, of mice and men often go away. And if that is the case, then holding on to your pants is going to come in handy. While you are at it, hold on to your sense of humor. You will need that too. And number nine, having fun. I fear I, I, fear I may have lost this if, we won't, if it weren't for my children. They remind me to have fun every day. Beg me, actually. Don't ever lose your childlike sense of wonder. Don't ever lose your curiosity. Then you go in the face of all the advice and let go. I say, hold on. What else would you put on your list? So this is some good things I think is some good advice to hold on to. And, you know... I, I think that I that that list was very 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 good I think you know um, 10 reasons why people hold on our topic today is holding on what are you holding on to talk to me 
Um, I'm reading, but you know, I know you're listening, but chime in. So 10 reasons why people hold on to their problems and how to stop. How to stop. Are you addicted to the problem? The payoff of having the problem. Having a problem gives you something to solve. For many, it is an engaging intellectual exercise. It can make you feel smart or powerful. Number two, having a problem makes the people in your life give you more attention and express more love and care. You feel more connected to your friends and your family. When they come to help, help you and support you. Number three, having a problem can be validating. You don't feel alone anymore. You get to bond with others who have a similar problem. That is an instant way to belong to a new community. You might even join or create a club or support group. By having problems, you look more normal, approachable, and friendly. It reduces the distance between you and everybody else. In a way, it improves your likability factor. You are not threatening to others. By facing a problem, you can demonstrate courage, persistence, and other qualities that makes you feel proud of yourself. You can be a hero or anything in between. Problems make life more less predictable and more interesting. You enjoy the adrenaline rush and all of the mental exercises your mind creates. Problems makes you feel alive. Problems can feel like entering a competition. They can put you in a situation where you will win and feel exhilarated and you love that. The way you handle problems can reinforce your identity. You may even choose to call yourself a survivor. Your problems give you enormous pride and honor. If the problem won't away, you would lose your identity. Who would you be without your story and your pain? You can't risk that kind of loss. Having problems is also a great excuse to avoid the things you don't have the courage to do or you don't want to do for example lacking time or lacking money are two problem two problem people use every day to turn down opportunities to do something new it's very convenient for people who want to stay in their comfort zone because it can be so common and socially accepted letting how to let go of old problems. Identify the payoff that your chronic problem offer versus the negative ones. Having excuses or let yourself down. For the positive payoff, look for ways to gain them through a different vehicle. For negative payoff, decide to stop making excuses. Right? So, again, this topic was near and dear to me talking today about holding on and you know the different types of things that people hold on to um my 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 thing for for this topic really is about parents holding on to the kids and not letting them function on their own and letting them think and do things you know we have to let them live we have to think that we're not here forever and we have to let them express themselves. You know, at least test them. I know a lot of parents may not want them to travel and do things like that, especially the days that we live in now. But, you know, we, we have to let them grow into themselves, grow into the being, grow into trusting them. Um, you know, if you have a daughter or a son, teenager, um, now learning to drive you can just send them to do a little errand or you can go with them for a couple time make sure you're comfortable while you're in the car you know you, you just don't harass them in the sense and always practice and let them know that safety is first um not driving fast a lot of 
people losing their life in accident and different things because the cars cars kill people i mean so we have to encourage the youths and make them um you know talk to them talk to them and you know um you know i mean we we, we have to let go a bit we have to stop holding on too tight to the rope, too tight to tie your shoelaces, too tight to tie your waist, you know, we got to let loose a little bit, and what are you holding on to, when last it, you, you clear your, clo your closet, when last you give away something from your closet, as I said before, once I ain't wear something this year, next year I'm not wearing it. No. Mm -mm. Just just a couple months ago, I sent a huge box to Trinidad. I was going to donate the clothes. And then I was like, okay, let me call my niece and see if she would want the clothes and thing because it was good stuff, stuff with tags, different things. Because I put on weight and I was just, you know, training a corner, training a bag, training a bag. And I got a whole box, she got a whole new wardrobe with stuff. And that's what I do. I, things that I don't use, I don't hold. I, I tend to let go. And um, we have to learn to let go. It, it is a process. And let the process begin today, guys. You know, and um, I know death is hard for some of us. And I know that we hold on. Some people hold on to the pain that their children died, to the pain that their mothers died, to the pain that the fathers died. That memory will always live on in you, you know, but you can't hold on to it and make that affect you from going forward, from doing stuff with your grandchildren, with people that you love. You, you know, you can't just stay in a rut and depress and just widow away. No, you understand. In life, we have we have vehicles in the sense that they will send us in different direction. And you know, I think um, we have tests in our life. That's why we live to give testimonies, right? So we have to build and renew our mind again and again and again, so that depression would not s step in. And we could learn teach people about your story teach people about your child how loving they were how how great they were you understand instead of just pining yourself away in a corner and that person has transition and move on you know and that's why it is always tell people children are we have them on borrowed time we're not going to live forever you know no one the time that we have on earth right now, that God gave us the breath of life, we have to cherish. We have to, to leave a legacy for your kids. Today or tomorrow, something should happen to you or them. We hold on to the memories, but we don't hold on where we, we, just, we just wither our way and you, you have no care for life. You understand? People will live and people will die. Plants grow, plants die. Animals live, animals die. This is the circle. The world is wrong. You understand? So we have to renew our mind, people. We have to renew our thinking. And never let go of the precious moments spent. You know, we have those memories, at least we have them, and we have snapshots. And renew and ask God to just keep your mind because we don't want to get in a reprobated mind where we lose our mind, we step into Alzheimer's, and we don't know nothing, right? So we just have to again stop the holding on too tight let go of things stuff people toxic relationship let go of them all right 
that is my message for you today um, on Motivational Monday. I hope it helped somebody. I hope it was beneficial to someone today that you have to learn to let go. Stop be holding on. Mm -mm. Let go and let God lead your path. Let go and let him guide your footsteps. He's your best friend. He could, you could talk to him. All right? We need to stop be holding on. Stop be holding on to a grudge today. Stop be holding on to bad family rival. Stop be holding on that my sister did me this and my brother did me that. Stop it. Stop it now. Forgive them. I never tell it to forget. I say forgive. You understand? And move on. Life is too short, people. To be holding on to things. It is toxic for your whole soul. You keep holding on to things. And when they die and go on now, it's woulda, coulda, shoulda. I, I really hope you're listening, you know. Stop be holding on. What are you holding on to that you don't want to let go? What is keeping back your footstep? Something is holding you back. There's a lot of people have a lot of bad mind too. That is holding you back today. And then you always say, Oh, somebody do me this, somebody do me that. Somebody ain't doing you nothing. You doing yourself these kind of things. Because you're holding on to these toxic thinking yes toxic thinking i would say because you don't want to let go and you keep holding on to all this animosity all this resentment all the love that you have to give and you keep holding on guys thank you anthony what are you holding on to today try to let it go guys the clothes that you have for how much years, you're not going to fit in it. Give it away. Give it to charity. A lot of people don't have a giving spirit too. I don't know why. You have to give in order to receive. Don't hold on to it. What you're holding on to it for and you're not going to fit in it next year or the year after. It's it just getting dry rot on you. Somebody else could use it. What are you holding on to? What are you holding on to? That bed you have for 20 years. Get a new bed. The mattress ain't good. What are you holding on to? So, I hope you get strength today. Parents, you got to let your children live a little. You got to let them be men and women. If you have grandkids, and I didn't say don't love your grandchildren. But them children is not your children. Let your children be parents to their children. Nobody can say you can't help. But again, be good examples. Teach them values that you hold on to. So that in the, the world to come, if something should happen to you today or tomorrow, you know they could stand on their own two feet and they could fend for themselves. That is what I'm talking about today. Alright? So I hope, guys, that you had a great day. Um, I hour this passed so fast, but it was a pleasure. Thank you, Nick Nick, for tuning in. Gloria, give them away. All size 14, no more. Breast reduction, thank you, Jesus. Packing straight to Trinidad. Amen, Gloria. Congratulations. I really find you was looking, but I didn't want to ask. But you're looking good. And I know, and, and I know, you know, you, you're letting go and you, you, you size 14 look, you, it's a blessing. So, you know, that is good encouragement there. Right? And um, have a blessed and wonderful week, guys. Put God in your life. Put Jesus in your life. Put 
you know, whoever you're worshipping, put them in your life and walk with love. Walk with love, you know. As the pastor said the other day, your neighbor is not the person next door to you, you know. Your neighbors is everybody you come in contact with. Walk in love. Treat people the way you want to be treated. Don't want good for yourself only. You want to you want good to follow you all the days of your life. You want your blessing. Do good. Don't matter. Don't worry about your neighbor on your right or your left. Do good. Do a good deed. Do do something for somebody. Don't be judging. Give and you shall be you shall receive. All right? Have a blessed week guys and again Love in the house, you know. Thank you for hanging with me. Motivational Monday, guys. What are you holding on to? All right, Phyllis, love you. Have a blessed one, guys. Love in the house.